The respondents in this matter all decided in the late 1980s to invest in what was described as a tax-effective investment scheme, but which was really a dodgy way to avoid paying tax. The investment was complicated, but at its heart, it was a scheme for crayfish farming. The financiers would lend money to the investors, who would then invest in the crayfish farm, taking a huge loss in the first year, and that loss would be a tax write-off. The farm's profits would then pay off the loan. The result would be that the investors got a huge tax write-off without having to actually repay anything. They raised $13 million under the scheme. That's a whole lot of crayfish. There was an initial verbal discussion with potential investors where they were allegedly told that the loan repayments were guaranteed so that they would not, under any circumstances, be required to pay additional money. However, that promise did not appear in the final agreement. Things didn't go so well, and Equus Corp ended up suing the investors for the repayment of the loans. The crayfish farming had never raised enough income to pay off those loans. The investors tried to rely on those earlier representations that they would not have to pay anything. Equus Corp, on the other hand, argued that it didn't matter what representations had been made orally, the parties had reduced their agreement to writing, and the written agreement is what should count. The High Court agreed, saying, in the nature of things, oral agreements will sometimes be disputable. Resolving such disputation is commonly difficult, time-consuming, expensive and problematic. Where parties enter into a written agreement, the court will generally hold them to the obligations which they have assumed by that agreement. In a time of growing international trade, this is not a time to ignore the rules of the common law, upholding obligations undertaken in written agreements. It is a time to maintain those rules. They are not unbending. They allow for exceptions, but the exceptions must be proved according to established categories. The obligations of written agreements between parties cannot simply be ignored or brushed aside. In other words, the High Court maintained the importance of the parole evidence rule that when parties reduce a contract to writing, it's the writing that matters and not any earlier oral agreements.